Yo, 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 what's up all my burners, pothead stoners out there? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How's all my friends and family and everyone doing out there? I hope you're all smoking some great herb, weed, whatever you want to call it, cannabis. I know Mrs. Weedman and I are going to smoke some right now. How you doing, Mrs. Weedman? I am doing well, Mr. Weedman. That's great. We're going to smoke real quick. Mrs. Weedman is going to smoke uh, a strain we've been smoking all week called Kush Cake or Cake Kush or Birthday Cake. Uh, it's a couple different names, but I'm going to go through it while she smokes and rips. Um, it's I'm, only, in- I'm only going to have one hit this week. <laughs> <laughs> so I can think. I thought it was great last week when you got baked. Um, but this Kush Cake, Cake Kush, is an indica dominant hybrid that sh- has a strong body effect and a sweet cake like flavor. A decadent as uh, as its Girl Scout cookie and cherry pie parent because it is a hybrid. That both strains were mixed together to make this strain. Um, it's got nice little crystals on it. Uh, nice rich THC resin. Like any dessert, Cake Kush is the perfect way to end your day with deeply relaxing effects that soothe the body without sedating the mind. That's absolutely true. The strain is preferred by patients treating pain, anxiety, appetite loss, inflammation, and headaches. The terpenes that are in here are carifolene, which gives it that spicy peppery terpene that may have anti-inflammatory benefits. Limoline, which is citrusy, which is scented uh, terpene commonly believed to provide anxiety and stress relief. And like we always say in Indica's Micrine, which is the most dominant in any strain, which I'm going to talk about Micrine in a little bit. But the most common terpene found in cannabis and has an earthly scent. And we've been smoking this strain all week and uh, the THC content, I don't know exactly because I got this from a friend of mine who said I had to try this because it was the bomb. And I do have to admit, it is an excellent, excellent, excellent strain. So I don't really have the THC content or the terpenoid uh, uh, and what's really in it. Uh, but uh, from what I'm reading, it's between like 22 and 24% is the average on this strain that you see. It's also also known, people call this wedding cake too, which I've smoked before and we've, we've rated on this. Uh, uh, podcast, which is another great strain. So it's a great stuff. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I talk. I, 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 the mind effect of it all. I do agree upon. It does let your mind go a little bit and keeps you thinking. But the relaxation and the sleep on it has been absolutely phenomenal. And the anti-inflammatory for my back has been great. So if you can find this uh, cake, uh, Kush or Kush cake or birthday cake, Kush or wedding cake whatever it's called that I'm reading here, I highly recommend it. Mrs. Weeman, tell me a little bit about your experience on this. Well, I smoke out of the Rick and Morty all hail. I like it a lot. It is a a pleasant high. Um, I don't know. Last week I thought I had it all figured out, and then I smoked too much of it, and my description and my reaction were worlds apart. (laughs) But I will say with this, um, uh, it's a nice high. It's not a super duper head high. Your body feels like a sloth. It's very hard to move. (laughs) And I feel like you get a little silly from it. Gigglies. We got a lot of giggles. giggles. Just like the last strain we we smoked, the kosher Mm -hmm. kush. This one here, lots of giggles. I think the kush strains that we've been smoking and have smoked in my past. Silly. Well, it does well for my body, like we Mm. talked about in the last episode. So this, the more kush strains I find, the more we'll we'll talk about on this on this podcast. And as you always know, we always we smoke a lot of indica. Um, I will try to get a sativa dominant one for you guys next time. Then you can see how crazy I get and why Mrs. Weedman doesn't like me smoking sativa. But Mm. um, Mrs. Weedman brought up a great, great. Thing uh, to talk about the other night while we were on this strain, she was talking to let's call her uh, Mrs. Weed Mom or Mrs. Weed Grandma. Mm -hmm. She was talking about social distancing to my mom, yes, to Weed Mom. And Mrs. Weed Man uh, was her mom was in a, a book club and they all gathered for this book club and they were practicing social distancing. But what this book club said is that we shouldn't call it social distancing. And why is that, Mrs. Weedman? Well, it was actually one of the women in the book club had read an article that was put out by some well-known uh, scientist, research scientist in, the, in medicine. And um, he thought it was the biggest mistake 
that the U.S. had made or whoever decided to call the distancing social distancing. He just thought it was the worst thing that they could have done because it just adds to a decline in morale because you think you have to be socially distant when, in fact, you don't. You just need to be uh, physically distant. And so he wished that it had been coined physical distancing. So stay six feet apart from somebody, but you don't have to stop talking to them. It's not right. about socializing. It's just about physical space. We are human beings. And I beings. thought that was super cool. I'm yeah. like, wow, why didn't somebody... And now it's like too late. You know, we're in it. We're what are we? Five months into this? Well, hopefully we're not changing it. Now. And well, you never know. Hopefully, people listening to our podcast will start calling it right. physical. It only takes a couple hundred yeah. people to start a new way of yeah. calling things, and then it spreads. You could spread it on social just, media. I feel like it's if, more positive. Oh, but absolutely. When you hear social distancing, like you said, it means stay away. Don't go around anybody, and that's very hard to do when you want to be around your family, your loved ones, your friends, people who you smoke cannabis with in the cannabis mm-hmm. community. What we're saying is. Physical distancing, six feet away, wear your mask, you know, and you could still talk to friends. I've done groups where we were six feet away and all had a smoke. We all smoked our own joints, but we all had a smoke and a beer together, and it was awesome, you mm-hmm. know, and that's that's when you stay away from people you love and care for. And, and as this has gone along, you could tell people are getting more and more frustrated mm-hmm. with, the, with the social distancing word. I, I don't like people that word. People are getting rebellious. Yes, very rebellious. So just a little tidbit here. Hopefully you enjoy that little, like, couple minutes of uh, – you know, trying to help you out through this COVID time. And hopefully you're all doing well out there. It's a, it's just still, man, be kind and loving to people. I'm going to say it at the end of this podcast. I'm going to say it at the beginning of this podcast. Love one another. We're all humans. We all make mistakes. But we all try to help each other out. So remember that. Just be kind and loving to one another. Let's get into this. As we're getting further and further towards the election, November 3rd, and I, as me and Mrs. Weedman say, we don't look left, we don't look right, we go straight ahead. So what I'm trying to get you all to understand is between all of the different parties that are out there talking about legalizing cannabis or not legalizing cannabis, you all have to realize, cannabis community, that our votes matter. Your vote matters. Because if you want legalization to happen on a federal level, you have to understand what all the candidates are talking about when it comes to cannabis, okay, and what they're going to do. We've talked about Trump, and we've talked about Biden, and I'm going to go a little bit more into the Democratic Party because they're fighting for cannabis legalization. But what's going on now, and I'll talk about Republicans in a second, but what they're doing now is they're trying to put some bills on the table to pass in September, and there's infighting in what they're believing. I just read another article 45 minutes ago about the Democratic Party on the bill they wanted to try to pass in September. And now there is opposition between each others in the Democratic Party that they did a vote on the National Committee platform on Monday, rejected an amendment calling on the party to support marijuana legalization as an official 2020 policy plank. Just came out. Just read it. Several delegates testified in favor of the proposal arguing the legalization and ending the war on drugs will help resolve racial inequities and stimulate the economy. But following discussions of measures, it was shot down on a 50 to 106 vote with three absentees. The panel uh, opted to keep the language included in the draft platform that was released last week, which I'll go over an article in a second. The document calls for decriminalizing cannabis possession, automatic expungements of prior marijuana convictions, federal rescheduling through executive action, legalizing medical cannabis and allowing states to set their own laws like presumptive democratic presidential joe, joe biden uh it, it stops short of endorsing adult use legalization which is the main one which i that's what we all want we want adult use legalization just like alcohol and just like tobacco and just like nicotine well the same thing nicotine tobacco okay so there's so many things going on right now in fighting the republican party they're not even talking about legalization of adult use legalization of cannabis and half of the other stuff that the Democrats are talking about. All they're saying is, most of them are all saying is this, let the states handle it. But it's still wrong because it's still on the federal level so they can come in any time and take over your crops or take over your butt and close your dispensary down and take all your money. They don't give a shit. So that's what I'm saying. What they need to figure out here is how we can come together. And I have two other candidates here that are actually for legalizing cannabis fully to the full extent. I'll go into them too in a minute. But I just want to talk about the infighting right now with the Democratic Party when it comes to cannabis legalization. Because I thought we would have had something put on the table by now going into 2021. But if you look at it, they want to put on the bill for September, on, on a vote in September, it still has to go to the Senate. 
and it's a Republican dominated Senate right now, so they're not it's not gonna pass there. And if it does, it's still gotta go to Trump's desk and he might not even sign it. So they everyone thinks that if the Democrats take over the whole entire thing, they'll get it signed. Wrong, because Biden is still not for it a hundred percent. And and Cory Booker out of New Jersey has been doing a great job trying to teach Joe Biden a little bit about cannabis, which is great, and try to get his mind expanded on maybe legalizing it. And Cory Booker, thank you for doing that. And and I'll talk about New Jersey in a second here. But also Congress is playing on a federal vote in September like I talked about. And it's just to me that they're not going to get anything done. Mrs. Weedman, before I go into the next two parties that I'm, I'm actually excited about reading with, for the cannabis community, what we've been talking about, you hear me talk about legalization of cannabis. You mm-hmm. hear me talk about it almost every day. And going to what we talked about the Republican Party just now, going into what the Democratic Party is talking about, it just seems like a lot of infighting that no one's going to get this done. Mm -hmm. Neither party. Right? It seems that way. Right. So I'm going to go, and I'm, like I said, I'm in the middle, but I think that we need more parties, not just two to control, especially that we all want in the cannabis community, adult legalization, just like alcohol, just like tobacco. We want legalization. So, but let me read to you what the other two candidates from the Green Party and the Libertarian Party say about cannabis, which I haven't talked about yet. So I just want to talk a little bit about the Libertarian uh, and the Green Parties. Uh, The Libertarian pick is Joe Jorgensen, and the Green nominee is Howie Hawkins. I kind of like just the green words just for, you know, (laughs) for green purposes. You know, make America green again. Um, their views on the issues in, in back legalization cannabis for adult use and more broadly ending the criminalization of other current illicit substances. The biggest problem we have right now is not the drugs, it's the drug prohibition, Jorgensen said during an interview with C SPAN this month. Now, do drugs and alcohol cause problems? She says yes. However, they, they would be more manageable if they were legal. And what's the difference between me and drinking bourbon in my home and somebody else smoking cannabis in their home? There is no victim. There is no crime. Mm-hmm. That's what Joe Jorgensen says. Yeah, and, you know, like, just to kind of elaborate on that, they put all these laws into place uh, prohibiting certain drugs being used. But there's a lot of narcotics that are prescribed <laughs> that are much worse. And there's all this... Okay, so there's black market for street drugs, but there's black market for pharmaceuticals as well. And I think that by just making everything federal legal and and taking away the law saying that you can't put in your body what you want. You know, if someone's going to be reckless, they're going to find a way to be reckless, whether it's illegal or legal. So why have all these laws in place? And it costs the criminal court system money. It costs the police department's money. It costs, you know, the taxpayers' money to to criminalize all of this stuff because of all the laws that have to be fought to put the people in jail, to keep them off the street, from selling in the black market, from killing people with the drugs that they give people. I mean, it's like a whole snowball effect. So if you remove the fact that these things are illegal and make them legal, and you know what? If someone wants to take heroin or if someone wants to take morphine from the doctor, so be it. Here it is. Because morphine is actually heroin. You right. just change the chemical by one and you right. get yeah. from, her- from morphine to heroin. It's the same thing. So you you know you pick your your mess. You want to you want to do it. You're, it's your free will, right? We're we're free. We're all here to choose. Right. Your life. You so, know. Anyway, I but, don't know. I don't, no. And who knows though? Because then it creates a bunch of lawlessness. But here, but, but here's would it really the, be worse. Here's what Joe Jorgensen says. Also, the libertarian candidate later described the drug war as an example of how racial injustice is built into our laws. Now Hawkins talked about drug reform and and, and the mass incarceration during a remotely speech mm-hmm. he gave to the Green Party National Convention. And we've got to treat drug abuse as a health problem. It is. You should legalize cannabis and decriminalize the hard drugs like Portugal, he said. Instead of just throwing people in prison and building the biggest prison industrial system in the world, United States of America, it's big money. Which Joe Biden had a lot to do with when he wrote the legislative architecture for for that chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee. We should be treating drug addiction as a health problem, not a criminal problem. I agree. So here's more what he said. Uh, And I'm going to read what... uh, Howie Hawkins, what his, uh, uh, it says H20 on there. It's kind of cool. It says green for president. 
Joe Biden put in place laws that have resulted in mass incarceration, especially of people of color, as well as multi-billion dollar drug war bureaucracy that fuels mass arrests. Biden bears major responsibility for why the United States, with only 5% of the world's population, has 25% of the world's prisoners. It's time to legalize cannabis and end the war on drugs. We need to put health officials in charge of drug policy and allow adults to grow, consume, and legally purchase cannabis. Yes. The candidates... Who also, said that? Uh, that's Mr. Hawkins from the hmm. Green Party. Yeah. Make America Green Again. Check on the other things he believes in, too. Of so. course. But I'm just speaking for the cannabis community and what we want as right. cannabis community. Right. Do I know all of his policies? No. I'm just but reading, that policy is a good one. That is a good one. The same thing with Joe Jorgensen. They're both good. Why I think we need to have more parties than just two. The candidate also argued in a separate interview that removing criminal penalties, penalties for illicit drugs can reduce opioid opioid overdoses by ending stigmas attached to seeking treatment we want to decriminalize all drugs except cannabis we just want to legalize it like alcohol and tobacco he said it's not as dangerous as those two drugs and should be taxed and regulated he says that cannabis is not as dangerous as alcohol and tobacco for other illicit drugs we wanted to do like portugal uh, about 20 years ago I got to read about Portugal and what they did. I don't really know much about their mm. laws and what they did to de decriminalize uh, all drugs. Uh, both third party nominees are going further on drug policy than either Biden or Trump, neither of whom support legalizing marijuana. Remember that. Biden, who during his decades as a senator championed punitive drug legislation, has so far drawn the line at de decriminalization cannabis possession, federal rescheduling, medical marijuana legalization, expungements, and allowing states to set their own policies. For his part, Trump has voiced tentative support for legalization to allow states to set their own cannabis policies without federal interference and also back medical can backs medical cannabis. That said, while the president's re-election campaign has been working to frame him as a criminal ju uh, justice reform candidate, he has proactively championed cannabis reform, has made several anti-cannabis administration hires and issued signing statements stimulating that he reserves the right to ignore long-standing congressional riders that prohibit the Justice Department from using its funds to interfere with the state legal medical marijuana programs. Also, despite his pledge to support medical cannabis and state rights, President Trump uh, evidently holds some negative views toward cannabis consumption. We'll see that's the, yeah. that, then he's not going to legalize it. So great, right. you did medical, that's fine, but you're still not going to go to the next step, which we all want in this country. 75% actually. Just because he personally doesn't agree with it. Exactly. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Right. Uh, as evidence in the recording from 2018 that was leaked two years later, in that recording, the president said that using cannabis makes people lose IQ points. So, <laughs> so <what> he <laughs> that's what he said. I mean, come on. You know, I like these two candidates. I don't know who I'm supporting yet. I'm still researching. Like I said, I don't vote per party. I vote for the person that best suits the kind of stuff I look for. So it could be anybody as long as I agree with their views and I like their views, I'm going to vote for that person. You do your own research. You vote who you want to vo vote for. That's why we're all free in this country to vote who we want to vote for. But I like the two third-party candidates from the Green Party, what they what they stand for on cannabis, and what uh, the Libertarian Party stands for. So do your own research, my burners, my stoners, and my potheads out there. Wouldn't it be really cool if the American voter – could vote on the policies that will be governed as a yes or a no. Yeah, we tried. And then yeah. the candidate, it wouldn't matter who the candidate is. You're just having their job is to do well, to change those. Our and votes should matter. I know, but more than, rather than vote, here, hear what I'm saying. Rather than voting for a person, there's a bunch of policies that need to be established and people for years, you know, for a four-year term, building up to that election, people are applying for policies and bills and things like that and whatever presidents do besides that, right? And so when you go to vote on a ballot, you're like the, let's say, the uh, federal decriminalization of marijuana policy. Let's just call it that. And you could say for or against, all right? So all these different policies. When you go to vote, you don't vote for, uh, you know, candidate A or B. You vote for a yes or a no on each policy. And then someone is chosen to do that job as a president, but they already have their orders. They're not going to create their, their, their own policies and their own plan. It's going to be what the people voted on. I've talked about and that. And then there'd just I, be it like an employee. The president is just the employee. He is an employee of the American right. people. And he acts out the policies and the beliefs of what the American people want But to that's happen why the, that's why we shouldn't rule. have a party system because right. the parties have 
you know, you have their Republican own agenda, their own agenda. Well, and they all Democrat. tell you what, what, what you want to hear. What you want to hear. Exactly. It's all so to win a vote. So, well, like I said, we're just trying to inform you on who is for cannabis. And that's what we're trying to do. And as a cannabis lover and as fighting for the cannabis community and for the legalization of cannabis as Weed Man 420 has been doing since we started this podcast, since I started Weed Man 420 six years ago, uh, we want cannabis rights and we deserve it. We deserve, it's been long enough. I mean, how long has it been that we've been fighting for this? Since we talked about Harry Asslinger in the 30s writing that law, I call him Asslinger. But it's been a long time. And it's, the time has come to keep on fighting for this. So I'm not here to propose any candidate. I'm not for any candidate or against any candidate. I'm here for the cannabis community. I'm here for the legalization of cannabis. And for all you burners, stoners, and potheads out there, that one's for you. So let's talk a little bit about biodiversity in commercial cannabis and what I've been researching about this. They're talking about farms and, and big crops of cannabis and what's going to happen in the future of cannabis. With uh, And I'm, it's a very, very good research, if you can research about biodiversity in cannabis, is what's going to happen with cannabis in the future. Because as we know, crops, if you know anything about farming, soils change, temperatures change. You can get a good crop, you can get a bad crop. It could take years to master a crop. Uh, it, it could take years to get the proper terpenes. As we talked about, I like kosher kush. It does well for my body. But if they have bad crops, if they're growing outdoors and you can't get it. So what's going to happen is there's going to be limitations of what they call monoculture. Uh, and it's, they need to have a strategy for this. And just like we have the COVID virus now, okay, just think about how many different viruses led to COVID, like 13 you know, and every year there was a different virus that led to this one. You're going to have viruses in in cannabis, in, in growth of farms where the, the, the plant might get a virus. So they have to figure out how they're going to, you know, make sure that we can keep cannabis bioculture and biodiversity and farming proper without using a lot of chemicals, I guess let's just say. Um, you've seen it in different agricultures you know you've seen the let's just talk about the potato famine you know you also have uh uh i remember watching a show didn't we watch a show one time about the banana crops we watched shows about the avocado crops you probably yeah 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 yeah. right the avocado we were watching about the banana crops and i didn't realize that there was a the avocados were like cocaine yeah there was like cocaine well there was was like big wars on like avocados (laughs) avocado dealers (laughs) but also there was a there was one about we learned about bananas and 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 how crops got destroyed from bananas and and this is what the cannabis growers and cultivators are going to have to really try to fix as more and more states legalize cannabis and more and more cultivators in the in places that they can grow outdoors in certain seasons are going to have to fix i mean in corn what's crazy what i learned about corn is uh they've had to make different strains of corn over the years to fight viruses, but not only just viruses, but different bugs and, and, and stuff like that that attack corn. And, you know, Monsanto with their seeds, they've, they've mine- generated, I don't know the word actually, but they've molecular generated seeds to fight these GMO. bu- GMOs, right, uh, to fight different bugs, to fight different viruses. But they have to change the strain of the seed of the chemical of that GMO every few years to fight because bugs get used to it and then they, they can go mm-hmm. and attack that plant after they build an immune system to that plant. So it's kind of crazy. So it's going to happen with cannabis. And and what people have to realize is as companies are selling, these cultivators are selling these smaller cultivators to the large corporations, the large corporations are going to spend a billion dollars on buying this, this farm out from a company and they're going to figure out real quick what they have to do to get more – because of their profitability back to them, Mm -hmm. but how to grow cannabis quicker, faster, and to be able to withstand all the things I just talked about. So that's something for you guys to kind of really think about. You know, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you know, with genetics and and diversities and genetics and stuff like that, it's going to be real big here. And you're going to see a lot of scientists get involved more and more in this because it's going to make big money. So just... Think about that when, like we talked about in the last episode, 
where you get your cannabis from. And eventually you're going to really want to know where your cannabis is coming from because there's going to be a lot of diversity in seeds and in growing cannabis in the future on large on large plantations, I guess you want to call them, or large farms mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. large whatever. So think about that, my burners, stoners, and potheads. Um, I was reading Forbes magazine, and they sometimes write about cannabis. Uh, but I try to. I, I always want to know about the different trends, and because of the other, uh, what I do for my main job, you know, uh, I, I always follow. I always read about their trends, so I always try to find file cannabis trends because I'm trying to teach myself, but also try to teach you listeners out there. Um, so here's a, a really good um, uh, article. It, it says eight cannabis leaders discuss emerging trends in the industry going forward in the 2020 and the 2021. Uh, they interviewed eight leaders in cannabis and I'll, I'll give you their names it doesn't matter uh andrew d'angelo of peak extracts katie steam of wafb's uh morris Bigal, aster farm san ludwig and weed plus grub mike laser mary jane gibson uh and then you got alpine stash danny mersloat and perf- and performer laganja Esh- uh, sorry i'm butchering this uh estranja <laughs> I guess it rhymes, to share their insights with with Forbes magazine. And here's what they said. Warren Barrow uh, was the interviewer of this, and he asked, uh, uh, what trends do you see emerging in cannabis? And Morris said, it's going to be a wild year for cannabis industry, all industries for that matter, with the global coronavirus pandemic. But I see upsides for the hemp and CBD industries. I believe because of current situation, the more emphasis will be placed on health and wellness. Eating good foods and taking nutritional supplements. If you don't want to get sick, eat well and take care of yourself. We've talked about that. Um, I keep that. Uh, you want to keep that immune system boosted as much as you possibly can. Uh, I see hemp superfoods and supplements that include CBD, CBG, full and broad spectrum extracts will find their way into more and more people's diets over the upcoming months and years. Uh, Sam Ludwig, uh, we see a movement towards sustainable brands as the industry matures and consumers base widens. The average user will be more discerning, caring about who, where, and how the cannabis products they spend their money on are produced. Organic, clean, and natural. That's what people want. And Mm -hmm. we've talked about this just on on the last stuff I just read and last episode. So this guy gets it. Um, he said they're seeing increased demands for sustainable cannabis, the message is resonating with consumers, and we expect the trend to continue. Okay, I want to say something because we've been watching a show on Netflix. Uh, it's about the business of drugs, and uh, the one episode was about cannabis. And this mm-hmm. guy, I don't remember his name, was saying the cannabis industry, it, the little guy and the little craft farmers are going to be done within 10 years. Yep. That's what he was saying. Yep. Okay, He was saying... This is big business. I've been saying that for yeah. Oh, I, I was right on with him. Oh yeah, yeah. you were. You've been yeah. saying that for years, and and it's gonna be it's big billion. It we're, already we're, is. Big we're business. talking about one hundred and fifty billion. Then they're thinking it's gonna go even further. Well, big like, corporations yeah. are getting in. Like he so said, this guy gets it, but he. I'm telling you right now, the little guys are gonna get wiped out. Right, because up. there's not enough. Um, there's a lot of growth and not enough people, not enough client base, right? Right, and so. The small guys can't stay afloat because they can't turn a profit because there's so many people that you have to pay out to produce and to be able to sell medically. So you're paying this tax and that tax and this fee and that fee. And by the time you get it sold to the dispensary, even if you know you own everything all the way along the process from seed to delivery, there's so uh, so many hands in the in the bucket that there's no profit to turn. So the only people that can thrive in the industry right now are people with deep pockets that yeah. don't need a profit. They can eat, they can eat a loss for you know five ten years, and then they're going to be the General Mills yep. of marijuana, and they're going to be the, the Johnson Nike and Johnson, and the Johnson and Johnson of cannabis, right? The Procter so and that, Gramble. And game. then I think on the flip side, once that happens, then this market has stabilized. You've got all of this like big industry, right? And there come mom and pops because people want the local grower, people want organic, people want to know what's in their marijuana, and they're afraid, you know, the big, mm-hmm. the big uh, corporations yeah. and are the modifying craft things. Will come back again. Yep, and the craft. We beer. see that in the craft beer industry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we saw it and seen it, and then here it is again. It's going to mm-hmm. happen in the cannabis industry, okay? Because everybody wants to get make their money. Uh, Mike and Mary Jane. Less strain names like Green Crack and more like 
string theory makes a lot of sense. So it's likely we're all in stimulation. Simulation. Okay, that's a weird mm -hmm. name to call a cannabis. Uh, Martha Stewart will open a chain of dispensaries called It's a Good Thing. Also, the cannabis industry will continue to <laughs> She'll be... She'll do so well. Yeah. The cannabis Snoop Dogg is her buddy. Yes. Uh, and also, the cannabis industry will continue to be strangled by taxes. We heard a lot about this on that. Well, we've heard about this for a long time. But California, right now, it is so hard to be... All these guys want to be legalizing themselves, and they can't because the taxes and the startup costs are absolutely astronomical. And that's not just... That's just one state. There's more. But um, Katie... There will be more mainstream CBD companies and consolidations of the industry to include more vertical integrated multi-operators that can withstand market vitality. Small cannabis companies such as ours have proven resilient in times of crisis because of our small pool of employees, making layoffs unnecessary as we weather the storm of the global pandemic. Being in the industry for several years has also allowed us to maximize production efficiencies and maintain a number of, of months of product and inventory, allowing us to pause normal production in order to pursue expansion goals. Uh, she thinks that as the, as the industry matures, it will be necessary to take advantage of economic and scale of automation and manufacturing. Good for her. Uh, <laughs> this is that La Ganga. La Ganga. I think I said it right. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name, sir. Uh, I think the greatest trend we saw come out of the cannabis industry last year was the creation of the LGBTQAI plus Pride Month's products. I thought it was cool. Uh, while it was great to see so much support among the community, I question the legitimacy. It was my hope for this year that instead of placing rainbow stickers over existing products, real thought and effort are put into the creation. For example, my collaboration this year with Fruits Labs not only expands the brand's flavor profiles, but also offered year-round. This is because both Fruits Labs and I believe it should be a uh, hashtag proud as fuck always, not just mm -hmm. during Pride Month. I like that. I like I that get too. It. Yep. I, I think it'd be dope seen. though. Yeah. Like every year during Pride Month, they cannabis companies should be finding a uh, you make know, a bud that they like. They do just bud, for the, like a just, small batch yeah, bud, and part yeah. of that money goes to the L LGBTQAI. Uh -huh. You know, and every cannabis company across the country should do that. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be dope. Uh, a rising. It trend. would be dope. Mm -hmm. Right. It would be. Is dope another name for marijuana? Yes, cannabis. <laughs> Dope. This is weed, man. Well, is oh, dope real. isn't like heroin. Funny. No. Well, you can shoot dope. Yeah. But also, people call cannabis dope, too. Okay. So, yeah. Um, hey, that's dope. Dope. Uh, there's actually a, a company that makes uh, gear that says dope on it. So. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. A rising trend. Uh, this is by Danny. A rising trend that we're seeing is an increased demand for craft connoisseur products. The cannabis, along with the knowledge of what craft cannabis means, becomes more accessible. We've seen growing class of educated consumers. Yes, we've talked about that. I tell you all the time, learn. Uh, once prohibition ends in a given state, uh, there trends to be a rush purchase of any type of product. Once the novelty wears off, people want a product that tastes good, looks good, and something that's created with ethical and thoughtful practices by a company they can believe in. I like this guy. Danny, mm. like you. Andrew, uh, delivery... Drive through, curbside pickup transaction, governments ought to support and encourage this behavior. Yeah, especially now. In store experiences will change the social distancing. No display cases and plexiglass shields everywhere. Edibles and non inhaled forms of cannabis will grow in popularity. Consumption lounges in legal states will be voluntarily shut down until after the pandemic. Legalization efforts will be stalled in short term by coronavirus, by, uh, but may gain momentum in the medium terms of tax revenues uh, plummet. It's hard. Uh, well, that's the whole thing. Every state right now is saying legalize it because they can bump up the taxes on it, mm -hmm. bump up the taxes on it. You're talking about it's going to get ridiculous because if the comedy goes to shit and they know they can make it up on – every state's going to legalize it without the federal government's help because mm -hmm. they want to try to make as much tax money as they can, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes here. So that is just some stuff I thought was interesting about you know some different trends from some leaders in the industry, and that was from Forbes. You know, I, they do put some articles out there that I read um, on them, and this one I thought was interesting for you guys to know what's going to up and come. You know, I have a daughter. You've heard me. She was actually on one of the shows, Little Weed Girl. Uh, <laughs> as names. you all know, <laughs> O-Dog, as she said. Uh, but I don't think I would ever not share my cannabis with my daughter. I just don't think I would. But You wouldn't share it? No, you, I would. Absolutely. You, you wouldn't? I would not not share it with her, maybe, <laughs> I guess. You know, okay. I guess I would okay. get my daughter knows where my cannabis is at because it's on my table 
and we're in the basement sessions. She knows she can come down here and never even has to ask. There's, my cannabis is her cannabis. I don't even think, and as her, as she, we, we've heard you talk, you, O-Dog is her name because she acts like a mean chihuahua. And we sometimes. all know it. Sometimes. Not sometimes. always. Not all the time. Not often. But I don't think I would not share it with her. But if I didn't share it with her, if I said, no, don't touch oh. my, don't touch my shit. Do you think she would attack me? No, because she doesn't enjoy it that much. Do you think she would like come at me with a baseball bat and she no. would be like, Meh! no, no, but listen to this. There was a woman, they're calling her a woman, but she was 22. So I'll call her a young lady. <laughs> a fine young lady in Florida was arrested on Thursday for allegedly attacking her father and trying to grab his genitals. Weirdo. <laughs> I almost spit my rosé out. <laughs> because he refused to let her smoke his medical marijuana. So, young Miss Fine, young 22-year-old Dakota is her name. Miss Dakota. Not That is not her last name. She allegedly lit up with anger because her dad, Luigi, now... Hey, Luigi. Now, wait, wait. Now, now try to, like, focus on this story and not picture Mario and Luigi, right? That's all I can I, I, it's, Does he wear the red overalls or the blue? Mario is red, Luigi's green. Blue. Green? Green. Green. Yes. Okay, so now try to picture, not picture, a little 64-bit dude walking around with his cap on. <laughs> 64. <laughs> Isn't it a 64, 84-bit? It's... 120? It, there, there, well, yeah, you can keep <laughs> on right. going. So anyway... Dakota is 22, and now she's all lit up crazy because Papa Luigi, in his overalls, came out and he said, Dakota, how would a, how would a video game Luigi speak? I just know how to say his well, name in Italian. Who cares? Who, yeah, who cares? <laughs> all right, so she got mad at Pops, right? And uh, so she came to blows with him. She, like, attacked him. She pulled him down on the ground and attempted to grab his genitals. What the heck? So anyway, she was arrested for a misdemeanor, I was and say someone paid really rude, someone paid her one thousand dollar bail. And probably, your, probably your old man, little Luigi. Miss, little Miss Dakota is back, <laughs> sharing pot with dad and his pals. <laughs> but she had to pay for it. Listen, I was gonna say something weird, but it was it a, was a trailer park. If it was not, Beach, if Florida. it was not like daughter dad thing, I was gonna say something kind of rude and crude, but oh, I won't. that's okay. It's okay. Uh, I think it's kind of weird, though. I was, I'd say, like, maybe she was on something. No. She's yeah, just pissed she probably, off. like, smoked she, some no, meth first. No, I, I don't mean, think who, so. who grabs her dad's crotch? The fucking girl wanted some pot. That's crazy. And she wanted her dad. She probably Un, thought her, she we could trust her dad to give her a hit of his joint bong, whatever yeah. he smokes out of. I know it's weird. And wait weird. a minute. How does a guy named Luigi have a daughter named Dakota? Shouldn't know. he name, name his name be, like, who's a country singer? Garth? I don't and know. And his daughter, Dakota? Italians, I, I, I'm Italian, <laughs> so I'll tell you this: that but you Italians name their Dakota. kids weird things. Yeah, you guys are okay. Weird. Yes, we yeah. are weird. Weirdos. Like, all right, so, so, but I mean, that's it's all it. Good. You know, it's all good. oh dog, I just hope you never attack me. My weed's on the table. I don't know. I, I just think that's <laughs> fucked up. I don't know. That's it is kind crazy. of funny though. Um, here's something really crazy: one state versus one state when it comes to being able to make a living with cannabis. And I'm going to talk about the state we live in, Illinois, versus Oklahoma. And in in this, since Oklahoma legalized cannabis uh, medically in June of 2018, Oklahoma regulators have taken a hands-off approach that lets the free market naturally decide the optimum number of operational businesses. So you could just go to Oklahoma and open up a dispensary. That's long, crazy. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's free market crazy. right there. Yeah. Uh, this lax attitude extends beyond business licensing into patient applications. More than 7% of Oklahoma's population is enrolled in the medical uh, program due to lack of state-approved qualifying conditions. Well, that hurts a little bit because I heard there's a, a ton of dispensaries in Oklahoma. Probably a reason they're opening up so fast is because they're probably waiting for it to go recreational. I bet you it will happen pretty quick. Um, but you need to get the medical uh, approvals on there quicker so these people can stay in business. That You're not helping free market system by holding back mm -hmm. the consumer. <laughs> so, okay, Oklahoma, you're partially okay. Uh, but here's the comparison. Illinois has seen marginal growth since launching adult use sales in January, in part due to market restrictions enacted by the legislation the governor signed. 
Even though adult use legalization has made products available to Midwesterners residents this year, the Illinois market total sales are only just matching those from Oklahoma's. Interesting. And and uh, medical only program, according to research from uh, Brightfield Group, uh, major limitations on Illinois medical market enrollment that hurt them in the beginning, big time. They've opened up a little bit more, but not mm-hmm. enough. Uh, including a, a restrictive qualifying conditions list and a fingerprint requirement, which they got rid of the fingerprints uh, in 2019. And that was kind of cool, so it doesn't hurt that much anymore. At the same time, Illinois has granted roughly 40 times fewer dispensary licenses in Oklahoma as of June 12th. Uh, Illinois medical program was designed to be highly regulated, uh, depressing patient participation less than 1% of the state's population is currently enrolled. 1%? Well, they probably don't want to give the medical cards freely because they make more money off the recreational. Well, now, but but medical's been around since 2013. I know, but if and somebody... And only 1% have... enrolled. That's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. But you get better taxes on, on medical anyway. Why wouldn't you enroll in medical in Illinois? But it's not better for Illinois at a state level. They're not going to get the same income. Ah, I read the numbers last week. They got 50, they've got they already made $52 million in, in tax, tax revenue. revenue. I know. And that's just recreational. That's not including right. medical. Uh, as a result, Oklahoma's medical program sales are only slightly behind Illinois, total despite only having a third of the population. Product selection in Illinois is lacking, and products are generally twice as expensive as they would be in Oklahoma due to supply constraints. Here's the kicker. $65 is the average for an eighth in Illinois. Now, I paid, you know, 55 to 75 So, yeah, average would be 65 Oklahoma, $30 an eighth. I don't know about you, <laughs> And I can do some good math sometimes when it comes to dollars and cents. And you got, you're saving yourself 25 bucks. Oh, no, 35 bucks. Mm-hmm. 35 bucks. Sorry, sometimes I can do math. See, I told you. And uh, a bulk of Oklahoma's 9,266 business licenses are held by small local companies, while Illinois has higher relative level of multi state operators, MSO presence. Yes. You had to have big money to get an Illinois game. Oklahoma has some of the lowest barriers to entry for dispensaries. Listen to this, all my burner stoners and potheads out there. In Oklahoma, it's only a $2,500 application fee for a dispensary. Wasn't the first 60 licenses, it was like a $100,000 application fee? Wow. Mm-hmm. And, and it was non refundable. Mm-hmm. $2,500? Jeez. 100000 you think Oklahoma wants business owners, I small would say. business owners, yeah, versus Illinois just giving it to the people that had the money? All you fucking lawyers out <laughs> there that got involved in that, sorry. Ugh. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox with that. I just heard that Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a super cute city. Super cute city. Mm-hmm. So they can move there and open I, a dispensary. Well, yeah, with the other. I heard. I talked to a with friend of mine else. today. <laughs> I talked to a friend of mine today. Who, Us and every who, other yeah, block who works will have in, one. Who works in Oklahoma? Yeah. He goes. You go to one block. There's six dispensaries right Holy now. Cow. Right. So, uh, with the plethora of licensed businesses, the Oklahoma market is encouraging greater competition. And Brightfield Group research shows the state has successfully driven down prices for customers and continues to attract new license applica- applicants. Oklahoma might be a good case study for regulators weighing in impacts on local and state revenue against the creation of sustainable marketplace. I don't know. I mean, 2500 100000 If you want to open up a cannabis business, you ain't going to get it in Illinois uh, because the craft licenses, there's 70 of them, and it heard there was 700 applicants on the first time around. 700, okay, for 70 licenses. Uh, as Mrs. Weedman said, Illinois collects more than $52 million in cannabis tax revenue during the first six months of legal adult use cannabis. Illinois, use the money right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Make it go where you said it was going to go. New Jersey. Jersey! Lowers medical cannabis sales tax. Right now, Jersey's uh, effective July 1st sales tax on medical cannabis is reduced to 4%. From the previous 6.625 sales tax rate. Wow. Yes. That's a big drop. Yes. And they're going to lower it again. The 4% sales tax rate will apply through June 30th of 2021 when the tax rate will be reduced to 2% until June 30th, 2022. Hmm. Then effectively, July 1st, 2022, medical marijuana sales will not be taxed. At all? At all. Holy New smelling. Jersey. Wow. Where I was born, Passaic, New Jersey... I'm proud of you, Jersey. 
That is hmm. something special to do for medical patients that some people live on tight incomes in that state, okay? And maybe live in poverty level in that state and can't afford like that tax. State. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm proud of you, Jersey. Yeah, my, cool. my, where I was born at so long ago. That's good. I wonder if Cory Booker, who I was talking about earlier, had some help on that. That's pretty good for him hmm. if he had help in that. It's a good man right there thinking of his state and people that need cannabis. Uh, here's something I didn't know. Arkansas, Arkansas, medical cannabis sales surpassed $100 million. Wow. And the state's patients have purchased a total of 17,447 pounds of medical cannabis to date. When did they go legal? Uh, I don't know. I can look it up on normal, but I don't remember here. Well, let me read a little That's more. Right. Uh, since the launch, of, oh, May, May 2019. Wow. Yeah. Good. So just over a year. Mm-hmm. Nice job, Arkansas. I don't know the population there, but uh, I don't think it's huge. So it's pretty good, $100, $100 million. You potheads down there. <laughs> uh, Hawaii uh, finally approves edibles Yay. for medical. Nice Go job, Hawaii. Hawaii. Go Hawaii. One more reason to move there. Yep. Uh, I was talking about this on a couple episodes before about Arizona. They were trying to. Uh, it was a big fight in in the in the in Arizona between. Um, state members and officials about legalizing recreational cannabis and now they're fighting to not legalize it at all even more. Hmm. There's lawsuits going on. Um, and what all they were trying to do is just legalize it fully um, and tax it a little bit more. And it's already medical in Arizona and your freaking edibles are really good. I've had some from there. Um, and just they want to why don't Make it wreck. Also, you have you have a lot of people that come from the Midwest that live in, in, in there in the, in the wintertime that probably need, they probably can't get a medical card there, so let them get wreck. I think it's, I think you're, you're fooling yourselves there, um, Arizona. Get your shit together. Make it recreational. You know what I always wondered? What? And I don't get red eye. I don't. I don't have to use Visine, and I've seen a lot of people in my past, and you always knew when you were younger who the burners were and the stoners and the potheads were because they always carried Visine on them because mm-hmm. they're burning their oneies throughout the whole day, and they're smoking from the time they get out. And I always know, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay, you're right, they try. <laughs> well, maybe they are. You mm-hmm. know, can I get a hit of your weed? You know, because okay, I already knew. Right. But I've never had that. Mrs. Weedman, do you know what makes your eyes red? Well, I have a little bit to say about that. Uh, and thankfully, there's people like us that do consume enough that we can kind of tell when someone might be high. And occasionally we get the red eyes, but not always. Um, but if you were with somebody, like maybe they're smoking for their like first handful of times and they started to like, panic, oh my God, my eyes are all red. What's <laughs> going on? But you can clearly say as like an experienced smoker that the person is not experiencing an allergic reaction or a big complication. So after you have some jokes with the person, um, you can just explain to them that it's, it's a completely natural occurrence that transpires after smoking cannabis. Um, in fact, according to this article, uh, your eyes turning red has nothing to do with the act of smoking at all. After consuming a cannabis-based product, uh, users generally experience an increase in heart rate and blood pressure. This is due to the plant's cannabinoids, which are chemical compounds responsible for some of the therapeutic and medicinal benefits of cannabis and their initial interaction with their body. So like right after you smoke, yeah, you feel a little racy, a little jumpy. Um, This rise in blood pressure and heart rate is comparable to normal physical activities like exercise or sex. So it's not like, ah, you know, not like panic (laughs) mode. Ah! (laughs) It's just like, whoo, I'm like flushed and... My heart is racing. This is good. Um, So generally, after about five or ten minutes, the heart rate will start to return back to normal, and your blood pressure will begin to decrease. And then as your blood pressure lowers, it can lead to a dilation of your blood vessels and capillaries, including ocular capillaries, so in your eyes. Uh, The dilation of ocular capillaries causes increased blood flow to your eyes, which results in your eyes turning red. So that's it. 
and it also reduces your intraocular pressure. You so said you, that really well. Yeah. Man. Well, have you been to the eye doctor? So you have to Once. sometimes sit with your little chin in the machine, of course, and then they shoot like a quick burst of air into your eye. That sucks. And they, Especially if you're big. Yeah, it has something to do with like your eye pressure. So I happen to have a little bit of low eye blood pressure, which could lead to glaucoma. So interestingly enough... Yay, um, cannabis helps glaucoma. Yeah, Yay, well, cannabis look, look, helps yeah. glaucoma. <laughs> Cannabis's ability to relieve intraocular pressure in the eye um, makes it a potentially viable treatment for glaucoma. And you can go blind from glaucoma, so that would be really cool if it was a treatment. Um, it also helps explain why your eyes become bloodshot. Evidence... Uh, that the THC found in cannabis can lower intraocular pressure is a major reason why glaucoma patients have attempted to use medicinal marijuana to treat and relieve symptoms of the disease. It's important, though, to know that some studies have contradicted that cannabis is beneficial for glaucoma. So there was a study in 2018 at the university, or I'm sorry, Indiana University, and they found that the cannabinoid CBD, the intoxicating, intoxicating cannabinoid found in marijuana, could potentially worsen the condition by increasing the pressure. So anyway, long story short, like everything related to marijuana, there needs to be more research, and we're going to see that. I'm confident we will. Well, listen. So wait, wait. Oh, there's more? Yeah, just keep in mind, nice. it's not the smoke that makes your eyes red. It's the ability that the cannabinoids have to lower your blood pressure causing blood vessels and capillaries to dilate. So if your eyes are really, really bloodshot, then we know that you've had a lot of THC. So you could be pretty happy because you got some good weed. So that's all. That was good. Yeah. And you know, after a few hours, it goes away and you'll listen, be fine. I think I'd rather get pain, uh, red eye from smoking weed than have to go to the doctor and get in the old brown eye. Ugh. Well, when I'm, Gosh, I'm about to turn asked? 50 here pretty soon, I'm going to have to go to the <laughs> proctologist. Nobody messes with the doctor. Dr. Sprocker. <laughs> <laughs> little international news here. Cough, cough. <coughs> no, that's what when they check for a hernia. They stick oh. the finger in, the, in like the... Oh, it's not going there. Okay. All you guys out there went and got yeah. tested for hernia. You know what I'm talking about. Women, ask a man... It sucks. Probably yeah. not as bad as what you have to go through yeah. when you have to go yeah. and get. Let's, let's, yeah, that's yeah. that's a bazillion times worse. I yeah. only get to get a finger put through the ball sack up in the hole up there. All right. Get, oh, sorry. Get, get out of your next story. <laughs> that's enough. Stay on task. It's better staying, for you. I'm staying. Hey, I'm speaking <laughs> medical terms. Right. The ball sack. <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> a finger in your ass? <laughs> no. Well, that's doctor. Dr. Schmachter. Back. Get back. The no, go back. Anyway, international news. We talked about Jamaica last week doing online ordering. This is pretty cool for them. They want to be the global medical cannabis exports. And good for Jamaica. Yo, man, let me tell you something. They are the, the I mean, they're the kings of cannabis. I mean, what they have done, you know, they yeah, deserve man. it. Yep. Yaman. Yeah, gonna... You said yo, man. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh. Like, Yaman. Yeah, Yaman? Yeah, yes. Mm. Yeah, we yeah. did live in the Keys for a while, so we did learn a little some. bit. Yep, some. But that's dope that they want to go global and be the global exporter for can medical cannabis. I want to smoke some of your herb. I want to smoke some of your ganja. I want to smoke some of your cannabis. So if you can get it to America, or one day I'm going to Jamaica, so that's for sure. And I haven't mm -hmm. been there yet, but one day we're going. So anyway, go for you, International News Jamaica. I'm proud of you. Lead the way. That's Show right. us the way. Okay? Thank you. Uh, real quick, Congress approves uh, measures allowing CBD use by military service members. That's I know it's not THC, but it's a start, and there's no psychoactive high because more PTSD as they're finding CBD does help because a lot of these guys are, are in pain, and maybe they don't need the, the mental stimulant right now. Maybe they just need more of the body relaxation right now to help them just relax and just get out of their head. You know, maybe they don't need to think that much. You know, sometimes THC makes you go mm -hmm. into your own mind. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't need that. Right. Maybe they just need the, the full brain just shut off with the body and they can sleep and not think about what happened to them in, in, in war or watching one of their buddies get blown up or one of their mm -hmm. loved ones, you know, who they went to, you know, that, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying I think it's good that, that, you not, that Congress approves. Get it something to help them, okay? Um... Another one here with the military. Uh, 
twenty twenty uh is hooking uh twenty 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 two many are hooking up veterans with free clones and a healing based community. Way to go, twenty two many. Uh, I'd love to get you on the on the uh, podcast here so we could talk. I don't know where you're located out of. I just read a quick little caption of it. Um, I'll read more about you guys, uh, but it would be great to get you guys on the podcast and learn more about you. So if anybody knows them, uh, have them reach out or give me their contact, and I'd love to talk to them. It would be great. Um, I love watching movies when I'm baked. I mean... Not just movies. You guys have heard me talk. I love watching animal shows. Uh, we're watching that crazy one on Netflix right now. The 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 seventy two uh, Arrhenius animals or some shit like that. We're watching right now. But me and Mrs. Weeman love watching movies, and I like watching movies when I'm baked. And there's some movies that me and Mrs. Weeman really relate to when we're baked. But Mrs. Weeman, this is all you. This is the grand finale of the show. Take it away. So Before there's a, a gentleman who is a um, film critic, and he uh, realizes that smoking cannabis and watching movies made them into a whole different experience. So he wrote this article, uh, One Cannabis-Loving Film Buff Makes the Case for Enjoying the Art of Film While Stoned. So, like most smokers, he says that he loves watching stuff when he's high. There's something about using cannabis that turns whatever happens on a screen into the most unbelievably, irresistibly captivating thing I've ever laid my eyes on. And that counts double for movies. But aren't there any specific movies whose craft we come to appreciate just a bit more strongly than usual thanks to the mar way marijuana influences our brain chemistry? Stoners often claim that marijuana enhances their audio and visual perception, and you don't need to have a deep understanding of neurodynamics to figure this out. When you are high, food you normally dislike becomes incredibly tasty. Jokes, which usually make you cringe, unexpectedly, unexpectedly turn hilarious. We know that. And as mentioned, things that aren't normally interesting to you, they become absolutely fascinating. And we know that. Like, yeah, or sometimes you're just, like, in the middle of a movie, and it's like, oh, you just have to stop that right there. <laughs> we have to talk sure. about this, and we need to, like, that really discuss. Yeah. yeah, like, hold on a minute. <laughs> what did I just see? Hang on. And then we go back to the movie. <laughs> it's like your mind, and then, like, you hear all, like, if you have surround sound, or even just, like, a, what do we have? We've got that uh, sound bar. Mm -hmm. So we don't even have, like, bass Right, and so we don't even and we don't even have like speakers behind us. Right, but there's little sounds that you don't hear on a regular and television. And as we always talked about, your your senses heightened. Yeah, so it helps holy cow! More. You hear the like you movie. hear like the like they're driving down a street, and there's a conversation between two characters in the car that you're supposed to be hearing, and you're hearing like that they, they've got a rock in the tire. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? Where? How? Why am I hearing the rock in the tire? <laughs> <laughs> right, you're it's like you get I've like I feel like a dog. A tire, I feel like a dog. Like I've got, heard some, like, I've heard sonar. some different noises, but not no or not fucking sonar, but not no rock in a tire. Though. That's way out there. That's yeah. dolphin shit right there. You're talking about yeah. <laughs> like listening. or like when a dog like they just know like they hear things like True. miles away. Well, anyway, in recent years, studies have found mm -hmm. that while small amounts of alcohol help boost creativity and productivity by lowering people's fears and inhibitions. Large amounts lower them by, deb by debilitating mental capacity. As every smoker knows, the same can be said for weed. Indeed, where small doses of marijuana may relax the nerves and heighten senses of perception, uh, too big a hit can seriously boost paranoia. Um, See, hold on. I we've talked about paranoia before. Yeah, I don't know about paranoia, but... I, I don't agree with this because we've talked about paranoia. It's not really paranoia. It's about people trying to figure their own shit out. Yeah. So they think they're paranoid. Like overthinking. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. But you get in your head. Let's you do. Just That's what it is. Like yeah, you get in your own head, head and yeah. all of a sudden you're thinking out of the, going, yeah. oh, fuck, did, oh, I, wow. did I forget to lock the door? Then you start thinking about you, Mrs. Wee Man. Did I forget to lock the door? Oh, someone's going to rob our house. Oh, my God. Our, 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 oh, did I, I need to go home. Meanwhile, you're already 20 yeah. miles away. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you get in your own head. <sighs> So, although hefty quantities of weed may decrease the quality of life for some, even being too high can potentially help facilitate enriching cinematic experiences. Does that even make sense? Yes, yeah, so 
having way too much can make your life really shitty. I mean, you got to like be normal a little bit in a day so you can function and do yeah, your things, Yeah, but some people right? need cannabis to function yeah. all day And some long. people can. And some people... Right. Some people need work, it. work, yeah. I'd rather see somebody take yeah. cannabis that has um, uh, bipolar, you know, right. and rather do, than take pills. Well, they're saying if you had hefty quantities that decrease the quality of your life. So I'm not talking about the person that it helps. I'm talking about the person that maybe has other issues and they're not using it therapeutically. I don't know what I'm even talking about. It's okay. It was just one sentence that didn't make sense okay. to me and now I've just gone off. It's all right. Well, all right, so happens. forget it. Anyway, next time you find yourself rolling up, maybe consider trying to watch an interesting, deep, funny, or action-packed movie. Right. Right? Why yeah. not? Not only do I guarantee that you'll have an interesting time, but I reckon it'll open you up to a new reality. He got too deep in yeah, that Yeah, this article. guy. Yeah, like, I just went off. He got too deep. Whole, he, he made, just, he made he me just go weird. He just, well, of course, because he started yeah. throwing some big words out there that his oh. article was really cool. Are you weird. saying I can't read big no, words? No, that's not what, what I'm saying, saying at all. What I'm saying <laughs> is his article was about... It just It's his perspective. Being, being high... And watching movies, and, yes. then he, and then he threw a bunch of stuff out there that tried to be scientific. It didn't match with the article. You know, we, right. what I liked about the article was just when we talked about it was enjoying movies and what kind of movies we like being mm -hmm. high to mm -hmm. watch or baked and, and having fun in the last we get yeah. of watching movies. Oh my gosh, like I don't even know that it's the type of movie. Sometimes we just stroll through something and it just happens to be like, oh, let's stop and watch that. So there was some Nature Channel that you were or shows. And there's like um, banter, like someone narrates the activities of the animals with like comedic value. It's very funny. What is that? What is what? You were watching it, the show. And like the little oh, insect all the is like, shows I watch? there's yeah. like two little insects and they're fighting. Oh, and the lady's yeah. like, hey, dude, show I was just talking about give me my joint. Yes. And yes. then the other guy's like, no, <laughs> I'm not giving it to you. And they kick yes. box and then it's, but it's little insects. Right. What is that? I don't remember the name of the movie. The, we were just watching oh it last gosh. night again. It's funny. It's hysterical. But. I you, normally, like, in a day, wouldn't watch that. But, oh, Lord, when you're stoned, it's really funny. Right, because your mm -hmm. mind is actually interested or in it. Or if you watch uh, Blue, uh, the Earth shows, oh, all yeah, the Disney, oh, the, the Earth. Ocean. Oh, yeah, those are all amazing. <gasps> those are amazing. But that's soothing to us at night. That's like the last show we watch at night mm -hmm. because it puts us into complete relaxation when we're watching a blue whale going through the Pacific Ocean by himself or with, with his mate or, or with his so with the baby. And it's just peaceful. And what, what that's what I like to watch the last half an hour before I'm ready to go to bed, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, we've watched some movies. What is one of our favorite movies we always watch when we're, when we like, uh, this is 40. This or, is, 40. is that what it is? That, yeah. 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 This is 40. Oh my God. That's so funny. When you're it's just so relatable. Yes. To us with kids and what yeah. we've done throughout our life. It's, it's just, that's the kind of movie we like. You just learn different things every time you watch it. You catch different, different jokes, jokes in a movie, like yeah. half baked, and all the all the great stoner burner pothead movies are amazing. But then you watch some technical movies and drama movies, and your your mind gets into them because you're in tune with the characters more, mm -hmm. or you can learn more from the characters. So this guy's article is pretty good. Trying to talk about the mind watching the movie, I get what he's talking about, but when you're watching a movie or a TV show and you're big, sometimes you might fade out and sometimes you fade back mm -hmm. in because the characters or the plot, you start forming your own plots in your own head. Yes, yes. And that's like, oh, shoot, I forgot we were watching something. Right. How many minutes have I just right. been thinking and about? And like, you got to pause and yeah. go back. So There's like a scene up. in a show and then it triggers a thought in your brain right. and now you're 20 minutes of like just burning. 100%. And I know on. there's a lot of people that, that watch shows by themselves but if you're married or you know your significant other or whatever out there just think about that you know watch this movie together and then either during the movie or you get stuck on something or and I know most people probably hate this cuz you're stopping the movie but you're baked and who cares we it's just to, an enjoyable moment. We have to stop and talk about things. Yeah, about. sometimes you want to. Oh my gosh, The Handmaid's Tale. Right. There's like way too many parallels. Right. So sometimes in you got this world. crazy shit going on, and you got to oh. discuss it. Going, is that really true? Can that, that one really we happen? have to talk about a lot. Right, a lot. But that's kind of fun if you right. enjoy like, or you wait till the end, and all of a sudden you you got like 
an hour of conversation after that show or movie you watch because there's so much you caught because your mind is so expanded mm -hmm. when you're watching movies like that or document. We like documentaries. I mean, mm -hmm. we like sh what's the mystery one we just watched on Netflix. It's some mystery. It was pretty fucking awesome about all the unsolved mysteries. Mm -hmm. See that explores your mind when you're really high. Like I am right now. I want to go be a detective. Right. So just you get in the character and like all I said, it, it creates, especially like if like you're, you know, you're watching that movie and the character actually sometimes be like, I came up with some kind of like bacteria thing the other night when we were watching, watching an animal <laughs> show. And I remember I said the bacteria was, it was aliens and, and they were fucking like, really Oh no, here. you were saying coronavirus is aliens. Well, the bacteria, the, like the cells of, of like the virus right. are, are each one little alien. Right. So but that's what trillions and trillions yeah, of bacteria. Like, they are so the that's what aliens. aliens are. They are here already. Right. They are They're coming. There's to get trillions you. of, bacteria out there they're all aliens. they're symbiotic some are symbiotic with our bodies yeah and some are not good bacteria bad bacteria exactly take your probiotics and your prebiotics da -da. anyway hopefully you know you get what we're talking about exploring your mind when you're baked getting into some good good cannabis smoke it out of whatever you like and just explore your mind if you like to read books if you listen to podcasts audiobooks movies, TV, whatever, cannabis brings you to reality, as I like to say it. Makes you think more. Makes you think about who the person you can be. This is one thing I've liked about, you know, being kind of like on lockdown like we have, you know, you go you're, if if you're working or not working, whatever, but I've actually found myself in these last since March. And me and Mrs. Wee Man have explored a lot of things, you know. We found a lot of things about each other, about ourselves and, you know, taking up, you know, Learning how to grow cannabis has been my big thing. You see me send pictures out there. You know, it's been a great thing for me to learn who I am and what I like, the Zen moments and finding peace kind of in, in sometimes when there's chaos, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just becoming that better person that you want to be. And hopefully as you see what's going on, if you have been participating in, in, in the peaceful protests or you have been fighting for, for, for peace and love and happiness and, and equality out there, you know, you explore this you know, and you watch and you become a better person, hopefully, you know, so, but I guess, uh, I just want to say I love you all. Thanks for listening. You know, it's been great. Uh, please, uh, you know, follow us on, uh, Instagram at we meant for 20 Chronicles, uh, and also our podcast. We're on all the platforms and we want to thank you all for listening. Mrs. We you got anything else to say? I just hope you all have a wonderful week. And stay healthy, physically distant, but not socially distant. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. See you soon. As Paulie always says, smoke smart, puff puffing away. <laughs> <laughs>